It's the most wonderful time of the year We are going to rank all the palettes I bought so stay tuned Cause we're starting now Hello lovely people and welcome to my most favorite video to film in the end of each year Which is my yearly palette ranking video I've This is my third one, I've been doing this already for uh, several years in a row And I really really love it Now this year I'm serving you a double shot of awesome Because you actually get to see not only my video but Alice's video as well Alice from Alice's Beauty Madness and I are collaborating on our yearly palette ranking video Alice and I have collaborated before, I mention her in almost every other video that I do, so I sincerely doubt you don't know who she is, but if this is your first time here and you have no idea who Alice is, Alice is a wonderful lady and she also makes fantastic content. If you are interested in someone who doesn't always talk about all the new things, but has a good balance between all the new things as well as being a bit more mindful about your purchases, and you happen to be a lover of single eyeshadows and finding dupes of single eyeshadows uh, for stuff that's in palettes, then you're absolutely going to love Alice. With that in mind, Alice and I have very different tastes sometimes when it comes to eyeshadow, so I think you're going to see two very different videos. I do think we have a couple of eyeshadow palettes that overlap, but for the rest I think we have very different, um, we have made very different purchases this year, so what you're going to see on my channel is going to be vastly different from what you're going to see on her channel, so I can't I can't wait myself to see her video actually, because I'm really curious. Now let's cut down on the intro part and move into the uh, palette ranking, because of course that's what you're here for. Just FYI, I have 11 palettes that I'm going to rank this year, and one honorable mention. I'm going to do this in an ascending order, meaning I'm going to start at the bottom. At the bottom of my ranking this year, to no one's surprise and shock, because I've complained about it on a few occasions on my channel, is the Millennial Pinks palette from Melt Cosmetics. This is one of the many, many palettes they have released this year. They've released so many palettes that you probably have even forgotten that this eyeshadow palette was even released in the year of 2020, but yes, it was. This was their Valentine's Day release. Now, I don't want to only be super negative when I talk about this palette, because it's not all bad. She does actually have some positive things to her. The packaging is really beautiful and what I think still is the interesting color story of this palette is what really attracted me to it. I do think that combining these like coral reds, pinks with the blue tone silvers is a very interesting idea. And I think the palette would have worked really well had melt struck gold on all, all the formulas. The matte eyeshadows are really really lovely to work with, even the two deeper colors over here. I didn't really notice having any issues with these. In particular, this shade here, the shade Modern Love, while it lacks the depth that it suggests in the pan, is actually a very unique and very beautiful shade. It's actually one of the standout shades in this palette. However, where this palette flopped and was an epic fail is the formula of the metallic shades. I don't fucking know what they were doing with this uh, formula, but it's just not a very good formula, so I wouldn't really recommend sticking with it. It's just very flaky, doesn't look very flattering on the lids, and I just really have no idea where they were going with it. I think in the end of the day, mostly I was just really disappointed that this eyeshadow palette didn't work out for me, because I had such high hopes for it. At the number 10, we have the Juvia's Place Topes palette. This is one of their smaller format palettes, which only feature six eyeshadows and they've been doing this a lot lately where they make these very beautifully curated color stories with uh, six eyeshadows and I applaud them for it because this is a huge leap from the uh, eyeshadow palettes that they used to make several years ago which in terms of their color stories were all over the place. This, what they're doing now, I highly approve. I still think the idea for the color story of this palette is absolutely fabulous. I do actually like the uh, color choices and the different finishes that I have put in here because you have these two shades which are a bit more like a classic metallic, this shade in the middle which happens to be my favorite because it has a more like flaky glittery texture to it and then you have the three mattes. Where this eyeshadow palette fails to deliver unfortunately is the mattes. I find the mattes in here to be a very thin, very slippery formula which kind of like blends away and into nothing and because of that this eyeshadow palette also lacks depth. So for instance this deep taupe brown over here doesn't apply anything like it looks in the pan. 
it uh, promises to be a deepening shade but in fact it looks like a muddy mess when you put it on your eyelids so unfortunately while I do really like the metallic shades and especially this one here in the middle I don't feel like I can use this palette on its own and get satisfactory looks out of it unless I'm going for like something super simple like a crease and a lid shade and that's it and had I known that Natasha Denona was planning on releasing the Glam palette, I would have waited out and not gotten this one. Unfortunately, the Glam palette was announced shortly was announced shortly after I had already purchased this palette, so there was no going back and to be honest, I still actually really like this shadow here in the middle. At the number 10, we have the Natasha Denona USB stick, also known as the Mini Gold palette. Now, I mentioned this palette as one of my least favorite purchases this year and then I regret it not, not elaborating a little bit on it, uh, so I'm going to elaborate on it here. Don't get me wrong, I actually think this is a great palette. If you look at this palette as like a separate entity apart from the big gold palette just as a standalone product, I actually think this is a fantastic palette because it offers you pretty much everything you need to create a wide variety of looks. You have a very nice transition shade, you have a deeper shade, you have this very interesting um, matte khaki green over here and you have the two duochrome shades, especially this one in the middle which is a very very beautiful, very reflective, very glittery formula. So honestly if we just consider this eyeshadow palette for what it is and you don't have the big gold palette, this is a fantastic eyeshadow palette to invest your money in because it's only $25 and you still get pretty much the full on Natasha Denona experience. The problem for me is that I have the big gold palette and when I think of the looks that I can get out of this palette and the big gold palette, I don't feel like I'm getting such different, dramatically different looks with this palette unless I am strictly going into these two greens over here. At the number 8 I have one of this year's holiday quads by Pat McGrath. This is the Fleur Fantasia quad. As I'm ranking this eyeshadow palette, I almost feel guilty that it's so low in my ranking. It is a very good eyeshadow palette, it is a very interesting color story and especially for Pat McGrath to put something so pastel out, it is very very unique to her collection. You're getting also very many different textures out of this eyeshadow palette and it's a very versatile palette. You can use it uh, for your eyes and you can also use it for your face because you get this fabulous uh, peach matte over here. You have this shade here which looks beautiful as a highlighter on your face. Um, you get also a very like sparkly and very glittery shade. The problem for me and why I'm ranking it a little bit lower is because I like to use Fleur Fantasia combined with the other two quads that I'm going to show you from the collection that was released this year. I just don't really reach for this quad to use it on its own. For me this is more of like a complement to the other two quads. Hey boys! Hey. <laughs> So cute! So I hope that you understand my reasoning a little bit of ranking this eyeshadow palette a little bit lower while actually really really loving it. Ironically, I cannot imagine pulling out the quads to do a look and not pulling out Fleur Fantasia. At the number 7 we have the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership for Decadence palette by no accounts a new eyeshadow palette but new to my collection because I just purchased it this year. I was lucky enough to get it in this absolutely gorgeous uh, gold limited edition packaging. I don't know whether this counts for all the decadence palettes but mine also smells like chocolate because it has cocoa powder worked into the formula so it is an absolute delight to all the senses when I open this eyeshadow palette. I am ranking this eyeshadow palette a little bit lower because like I said on many occasions to me this is a palette of standout shades. You know how you have a group of people and there's always like one person that stands out? You know there's always the leader of the pack, the person that stands out and to me this palette is full of these kind of people. It's a palette of standout shades. However, I don't think of this palette as I'm going to pull out the decadence and only do a look with it. You can. If you like uh, one eyeshadow type of looks, there are definitely a lot of eyeshadows in here that you can achieve beautiful one eyeshadow looks with. Uh, for instance, this shade here, the shade Divine Mink, this neutral here as well. If you like your deep smoky uh, eyes, you can do the dark blue, the dark purple. If you want to go a little bit lighter, you can take this shade here, which is absolutely stunning. Even though all of these shadows are metallic, some of them do have a little bit more of a setting formula to them so they can be blended out through the crease, such as this shade here, the purple one, as well as the blue. But like I said, I am a very 
conservative person when it comes to doing my makeup. I do like to have a little bit of a transition shade. I take Decadence out to pair it with other eyeshadow palettes from Pat McGrath, which is why for me it just ranks a little bit lower. That is not to say I don't like it or I don't enjoy any part of it. I love every part of this palette. I enjoy it so very much. At number 6 this year I am ranking the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. She came out as a surprise, no one saw her coming and yet she took uh, the community by storm because she's landing on a lot of people's favorites this year. Is this the most outstanding and unforgettable Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette out there? I don't think so. I think this is a pretty basic beach palette but it is a very solid basic beach palette because if you like cooler toned eyeshadows and the community has really been longing some good cooler toned eyeshadow palettes this year. This is all you need. It's a fantastic eyeshadow palette release. You get a good variety of mattes to do all of your transition and outer corner work. You get a great many variety of metallic eyeshadows to put on your eyelids as a uh, pop. You get all these different like undertones of the cooler shades. You get a bit more of like the pinks. You get a bit more of like the silvers. You get a little bit of this like gold moment over here. Um, where this eyeshadow palette lacks a little bit for me personally is the glam element to it. It's called glam and yet none of these eyeshadows is a very glittery texture. So unlike with the bronze palette, which for me ranks a little bit higher this year, this eyeshadow palette lacks a little bit of versatility when it comes to the textures. This pink over here is the only eyeshadow that I would qualify as a little bit more glamorous and glitzy because it has a bit more sparkle to it. The rest are very smooth very beautiful, very classy metallic eyeshadows, but that's all they are. They are metallic eyeshadows. I'm almost sure that had Natasha included a couple of more sparkly textures in here, I might have ranked this palette a lot higher because I've really been enjoying it. And this is coming from someone who is not necessarily a cool toned eyeshadow person. I've really been enjoying this palette. At the fifth position this year I ranked the Risqué Rose or Risqué Rosé, I don't really know which one is correct, uh, quad from Pat McGrath Labs. This is also partially the eyeshadow that I'm wearing on my lips today. I actually have a lot of lavendering on my eyes and on my lips today because I have this shadow all over the purple shade from the Midnight Sun palette. I have the Midnight Sun palette shade all over my lid and also on my lower lash line and then I have the lavendering shade all over my lid. This eyeshadow quad came out of nowhere and stole my heart. I wasn't even planning on purchasing this quad originally because I am not the hugest fan of these sort of like hot pinks. If this hot pink can had been a um, mid-toned, cooler toned purple, I think this quad would have been absolute perfection. But just because of that stupid hot pink shade, I was not very drawn to this quad. However, this quad is probably the most interesting of all the three that was released this year because it contains three new formulas. It has the uh, cream to matte, it has this gorgeous, flaky, glittery, foiled duochrome eyeshadow over here which is called Lavendering and it also contains this gorgeous shade which is called Life on Mars which looks so unassuming but it has the most beautiful creamy texture to it and it just has a very beautiful undertone to it as well. Now what I really love about this quad is these three shades. Like I mentioned the hot pink is not something that I'm going to get a lot of use out of but these three oh my fucking god absolutely. I love the rich deep chocolate brown tones of the matte eyeshadow. I love Life on Mars because it is such a beautiful neutral shade and Lavendering is gorgeous. It's so incredibly versatile. There's literally no eyeshadow that you cannot pop Lavendering on top of to get a little bit of those very interesting sparkles that are in this eyeshadow. However, I want to make it clear it's not just for Lavendering that this quad has a higher ranking position. It's also because of Life on Mars and the gorgeous deep chocolate brown shade. Number 4 this year is another Melt eyeshadow palette and this is the Rust palette. I think this is one of the best eyeshadow palettes that Melt has released this year. I didn't really care for the Beetlejuice collection because it looked a little bit redundant, like a lot of the shades within the eyeshadow palettes looked very redundant of each other. I didn't care for that cooler toned purple palette. Um, I didn't really like the Millennial Pinks palette, however I think they outdid themselves with the Rust palette. I love the undertones in this eyeshadow palette. I just find them to be so incredibly unique. These three shades here are really unique. I love the tones of these two mattes. I adore this beautiful warm chocolate brown shade. These two are also very interesting. This is a more like a cooler leaning brown shade and this is a very nice uh, deepening shade. 
overall a really stunning release from Melt Cosmetics. I do miss having a, a few more metallic shades if I'm being completely honest. We could have skipped this uh, vanilla shade over here. I would have much rather had another beautiful metallic instead of this shade. This peachy shade here is fine, but honestly I think we could have substituted it for a more interesting metallic shade and it would have made a more interesting balance between the matte and the metallic shade. So that is the only like negative thing that I would point out about this eyeshadow palette, that in the end of the day it is mostly matte eyeshadows, because you are getting only one, two, three metallics, and out of these three metallics, these two are the ones that are going to be a bit more impactful. This one has a little bit more of like a setting finish to it. So I think overall a fantastic release, but it could have been even better had they included just one or two more interesting metallic shades. At the number three we have the deliciously warm bronze eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denona. What a stunning release from the brand this year. I think of all the eyeshadow palettes that Natasha has released this year, this one definitely for me personally ranks the highest because I just find it to be such a beautiful interpretation of like a warm neutral palette. Yes, we've seen so many of those, but I find this to be such a beautiful one. Yes, it is a little bit monochromatic, but it also doesn't promise you to be anything else because it's called bronze. What makes this eyeshadow palette superior in my eyes, especially compared to the Glam palette, is that you get so much more variety when it comes to the textures of the eyeshadows. You get your classic matte eyeshadows which also come in beautiful undertones to them. In particular I want to mention this shade here, the shade Sunburn, because it has a beautiful undertone to it. You also get one of those uh, cream to powder formulas. You get this very interesting shade over here which is like a lavender purple with a bit of a blue duochrome to it. You get a few actual metallic duochromes. You get more sparkly shades. And yes, while it is monochromatic, you do get quite a few undertones of the color bronze. You get the more coppery bronzes, you get the more orangey bronzes, the more red bronzes, uh, the more neutral bronzes. Like I said, you get those two very sparkly shades, so I feel like you can achieve quite a lot with just this eyeshadow palette. So overall, a fantastic release from Natasha Denona, and she rightfully takes the third spot in my yearly ranking. At a very well-deserved second spot, we have my personal favorite of all the quads that were released this year by Pat McGrath Labs for Holiday 2020, and that is the Interstellar Icon Quad. What a fabulous eyeshadow palette! What an outstanding eyeshadow palette! And no, it's not because of the beautiful blue duochrome shade that this quad uh, ranks second for me, it's because of the overall color story, and I just wanted to mention something because I've heard so many people in, and I was one of those people. I was also very disappointed that this year's quads do not contain any of the special shades. No blitz shades, no astral shades, just regular old metallics and mattes. But you guys, this quad is so incredibly stunning that it immediately cured me of any disappointment that I might have experienced because we're not getting any special shades this year. I think these are special in their own way. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, this shade here is a repeat from the Decadence palette. However, these three are outstanding. They are new to Pat McGrath's collection and honestly, I think each and every one of them is absolutely beautiful. This shade here, the shade Golden Polaris, is a hidden gem in the palette. I don't think anyone sees this shade coming for them. It looks like a very boring goldish beige when you look at it in the pan, but then when you put it on your lids it just comes to freaking life. It has the most beautiful tone to it, the most beautiful shine, it has a gorgeous pink glitter running through it and I just think it looks absolutely stunning on the eyes. You can use it as a lid shade, you can pair it actually very nicely. One of my absolute favorite neutral looks to do in the past couple of months has been pairing the Interstellar Icon and the Fleur Fantasia quad. I take this shade in my crease and then I take the uh, deep purple shade in my outer corner and I put golden polaris all over my lid. If I'm feeling particularly frisky I will put a little bit of lavendering over top of golden polaris for some like extra duochrome and sparkle but honestly this look just as it is with a red lipstick looks absolutely stunning. The shade Divine Dahlia, the neutral shade here, is also a very very unique eyeshadow. I wouldn't even know how to explain it because it's like a taupe with green undertones, with a bunch of different glitters running through it. Like, if I'm looking at it in this light, it has a bunch of green glitters that are shining in the light for me now. It is such a beautiful and unique shade. If you are a huge fan of Pat McGrath Labs and you skipped on the quads just because you thought they weren't going to be anything special due to the lack of the special shades, I would say don't sleep on this one because you're going to regret it. It is absolutely beautiful. And last, but certainly not least, we have my absolute 
favorite palette that has been released this year and that is without the shadow of a doubt Divine Rose 2 from Pat McGrath Labs. This is the most unique, most beautiful and most fun palette that has been released this year in my personal humble opinion. I am a very boring person you guys, I'm not a very adventurous person. This eyeshadow palette is that friend who takes me out bungee jumping and convinces me that bungee jumping is going to be one of the best things I've ever done in my life and you know what? She's probably right. Or he. This eyeshadow palette is the most fun, most beautifully curated, most unique summer eyeshadow palette released if I have ever seen one before. It's cocktails on the beach, enjoying life to its fullest during your summer holiday. It is an outstanding eyeshadow palette. Each and every single eyeshadow in here has beautiful, gorgeous quality to it. And I also want to point out that this eyeshadow palette is the first time that a luxury makeup brand has released a multi-chrome into one of their eyeshadow palettes. Pat McGrath, let's not forget that, Pat McGrath Labs is the first higher-end brand to release a multi-chrome in their eyeshadow palettes. And not just any multi-chrome, but the most beautiful formula out there. Even though I would consider myself pretty much a huge fan of all things duochrome, I haven't really dabbled my toes too much into multi-chromes. I did purchased the original multichromes that were released by Donna's Cosmetics several years ago and the reason I never really proceeded into exploring more is because I got the impression that especially these like deeper jeweled multichromes always have a very dark uh, black base to them and working with them can be very very hard because as soon as you start blending them out they turn into a muddy mess and it's just they are not very user friendly. Let me tell you, as someone who has struggled with that, I find VR's Extraterrestrial to be an incredibly easy shade to work with. It has a gorgeous texture, so you can either use it very sheerly and blend it out on your lids, or you can pack it out to have a lot of punch, you can spray your brush if you want it to be even more shifty and multi-chrome, which makes it very versatile. There is really not a single shade in here that I don't like, including the hot pink shade, because the hot pink shade, while it is a hot pink, it has a very nice setting texture to it and a little bit of like a golden sheen running through, which, make, which makes it a little bit warmer and I feel like a little bit more flattering for most people. Yet again, this is a very versatile eyeshadow palette because you can also use a bunch of the shades in here on your face. You can use this shade as a blush, this one as a highlighter, this one as well as a highlighter. If you have a somewhat deeper tone you might be able also to use this shade as a highlighter. I think Divine Rose 2 is in a league of her own and I would be highly surprised if she doesn't end up as the number one eyeshadow palette for a lot of other YouTubers ranking lists. So that's all I'm gonna say. I can continue going on and on about it, but honestly, you just have to try it for yourself. As I was making this ranking video, I realized that there was one eyeshadow palette that I was forgetting, which I actually have gotten in the year of 2020. However, I decided against ranking this eyeshadow palette because I don't think I can rank it objectively. And that is the gold palette from Natasha Denona. I received this eyeshadow palette as a gift from my beautiful friend Bia, which is why it holds an incredibly dear uh, and special place in my heart and because of the way this eyeshadow palette came into my life she occupies a completely different compartment in my brain and in my heart and I cannot objectively rank her together with all the other eyeshadow palettes that I have purchased myself. Natasha has certainly released a lot of palettes but in my personal opinion this remains her masterpiece. Alright you guys, this wraps up my yearly ranking of eyeshadow palettes. Please don't forget to check out Alice's video which, as I mentioned, is going to be linked in the description box below. Don't forget to let me know what are your top 3 eyeshadow palettes that you have purchased this year. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more of my face and I will see you in my next video. Bye!